Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with the Kill Count, and tonight, well, I hope you're ready for a fight, because we got Mortal Kombat for 2021. So I actually do remember watching this film. It's actually pretty good. I think. <laughs> it's been a while, so I don't know exactly how it went, but I'm just gonna let this thing play for itself. So, don't worry. I'll do the other two, you know, the first one and Annihilation, but I figure I hit the newer one. So, without any further ado, be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go! Let's begin. Welcome to the Kill Count, where nice we scorpion tally up there, the victims James. in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Mortal, Mortal Kombat! Kombat! Released in 2021. Yep. I'm pumped to cover this movie, because y'all know I'm an MK Ultra fan. That is, an ultra fan of MK, not a fan yeah. of MK Ultra. I've played the game <laughs> since an early age, when they were somehow not as impossibly hard for me. No, no, fuck. Earlier this year, I covered the 90s movies, and while the first mm -hmm. is fun enough, the second is an abomination. And neither yeah. are my particular style in terms of aesthetic or humor. <laughs> Conversely, Sorry. this modern adaptation is my <laughs> shit. Listen, I know it's got a lot of problems. The structure's a mess, and the Arcana thing feels like an unnecessary over-explanation. Plus, spoiler alert, they never get to the tournament. Mortal Kombat's about oh, well. a tournament. They spend the whole movie talking about a tournament. 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 And yet, they never get to the goddamn tournament. It's done. I think they're the saving for the sequel. I really enjoy. It's aware of its campy source material, but still plays things seriously enough to have an impact. Who the mm -hmm. fuck is not about to cheer when Scorpion says... <laughs> That's friggin' awesome! Most everyone who made this movie was a fan of the games and wanted to do them justice. Among them nice. was Australian director yeah, Simon McCoy, who kept things going during the 12 week shoot in and around Adelaide, South Australia. Ultimately, Oof. this feels like a setup to a Mortal Kombat movie series, and if you keep that in mind, it should help you have a good time. And I think it's still fun, even if you don't know any of the lore. For fans of the <laughs> franchise, though, it's even better, thanks to tons of little inside jokes that I'll yeah, be pointing sure. out during this episode. Okay. I know plenty of people share on this movie and that's fine i mean it's not great but i had a blast watching it and maybe Same. you will too and besides y'all just like the games this thing is gory as fuck cue the sponsor Damn. talk with Raycon Here earbuds, you can enjoy amazing audio quality wherever you are and no matter what you're doing. They fit <laughs> snug inside your ear holes, so they'll stay put, even if you're fighting to save Earthrealm and Mortal, Mortal Kombat! I use my Raycons to listen to podcasts and music while I'm doing chores. Lately, I've been using them while raking leaves, listening to the new Limp Bizkit album. Yeah! Raycons are available mm -hmm. in five <laughs> stylish colors, so you can get them as gifts for everybody this holiday season. They start at Ooh. half the price well, of you other mine, They're pretty good. Brand, so they won't break the bank. And with free shipping Amen. and returns, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Get 15% off your order today by using the promo code HOLIDAY. Just go to buyraycon.com slash deadmeat and use code HOLIDAY to get 15% off. The 90s movies had bloodless kills owing to their PG-13 ratings. This but movie now we got, got an NC-17 and I'll show you why. Let's get to the kills. Yeah, and like I said, I actually watched this one myself. I'm not too sure if it's that bad, but like I said, I, I, I kind of have a biased one because it was pretty good since I didn't watch any of the uh, previous ones beforehand. So, yeah. What? And before you ask, yeah, I saw it in theaters. Like, come on, man. Not. Anyway, time to see the reboot. See how it holds up to the original legacy of Mortal Kombat. I'll stop now. Begin. The movie begins in Japan in 1670, the compound of Hanzo Hasashi. Hanzo is a ninja of the Shiro Ryu clan, but he's also a family man and confirmed wife guy. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. While he's out mm -hmm. getting water, though, his compound is attacked. The first victim is cut Zero. down, or up, on the other side of this wall. Hanzo's <laughs> wife and son hide their family's baby girl before they're found by Bi Han, a Chinese ninja of a rival clan called the Lin Kuei. He is not mm -hmm. only a mean man, he also has ice powers, because this is the original Sub-Zero, Sub -Zero! motherfuckers! When Hanzo comes back, he's shocked to find a random ninja friend dead with a spear in his back. Actually, he's a bit more concerned with his wife and son's frozen bodies that he finds outside the compound, sitting there looking like a prize-winning ice sculpture. This leaves Hanzo understandably pissed, and he takes it out on the <laughs> four Lin Kuei ninjas who attack him. He fucks them up real bad, and the movie doesn't hide from the gruesomeness of Blade Oh! Kills. By the way, this group of kills also includes two of Hanzo's men seen in the background. Hanzo oh. grabs a kunai his wife had been using for gardening, and a long rope to fasten together his signature weapon, Ripped a harpoon that he uses to kill the next wave of ninjas. It's choreographed pretty clearly, which makes my job a whole lot easier. 
easier. I Damn. counted nine victims total during this attack, the last one getting clotheslined to the ground. <laughs> You're Hanzo finds yep. Bihan, and though he doesn't speak his language, both of them are fully fluent in kickassery. They have an awesome fight scene revolving around Hanzo's kunai, which makes its way into oh. and across both of their bodies at various points. Mm -hmm. Bihan eventually overpowers his foe oh. and sticks the spear tip into Hanzo's shoulder. He's so confident that it's enough to kill Hanzo that Bihan walks away like, fuck it, looking like Jason in part three. Hanzo's still alive enough to crawl past an extra body we didn't see before, but and then he stretches the out bit. his arm and dies closer uh, to his compound. Good see. thing he didn't make it inside. He might have burned the damn thing down with that fire magic. Mm -hmm. A thunder god named Raiden arrives, eyes all a glowing, and finds the hidden heir of Hanzo Hasashi. It's time for that baby to take a lightning trick, and time for us to take a look at this title card. Title card! Card with a K. Some text that's spells pretty out good. our situation. Earth Realm, that's us, is one fighting tournament away from being taken over by the violent dimension <laughs> known as Outworld. But again, don't hold your breath waiting for the tournament. Right now, we need yeah. to introduce shit, like Hanzo Hasashi's descendant Cole Young, a movie-only mm -hmm. character played by Louis Tan, created to be an audience surrogate of sorts. I know lots of people, Bear? myself included, weren't thrilled about the inclusion of a non-game new character. There's only one of those I'll stand. My boy Art Lean, rest in peace, buddy! But don't blame Cole yeah, writer Greg Russo, a lifelong oh. fan of the games. He said Cole Young was a studio demand that came straight from Warner Brothers. Cole's a cage fighter with a loving wife, Fair? Allison, and daughter, Emily. But their love doesn't keep him from getting his ass kicked. He's always losing his bouts, despite Emily's solid advice. The uppercut is a big damage move in the game, especially in the <laughs> first few before combos were more of a thing. Cole was mm -hmm. beaten bloody, but seems like he still has fans, like this handsome stranger. Hey, Cole Jack. Young. The man that took the belt from Eddie Tobias. That name is a reference to the men who made Mortal Kombat, Ed Boon and John Tobias, who were working cool. at Midway Games in the early 90s. This is Jax and his giant arms, and he's very forward. Yeah, this is before the robot arms, so. Marking. He's had it since birth, and it was also seen on Hanzo during his fateful trip to the watering hole. Jax mm -hmm. keeps an eye on Cole as he and his family go for ice cream. <laughs> oh, and check it. This ice cream place must have experiential marketing, because it's snowing all of a sudden. It's more than snowing, actually. It's a full-on deep Freeze here. And yeah, look that's who a kid again. Making things frosty. Beyond the bee hole is back as Sub Zero, howling hard and doming one dude Ooh, in the head. Ouch. Alpha kills it. This ice attack is awesome Heads up. since it was done practically. The effects team experimented with the best materials that would look and break like real ice, and devoted a whole warehouse to making enough of it. Special effects supervisor <laughs> Peter Stubbs even built Thanks, an Stubbs. ice gun to make the hail rain down. Jax rolls up. I mean, fair enough. When you have Sub Zero, you gotta make sure you got the right ice for the job. Literally. <laughs> and also, a uh, little spoiler ahead. There's a reason why the tournament didn't take place. Let's just say the bad guys are pretty much just trying to kill the group before the next tournament so that Outworld would win by default. Yeah, so basically they're trying to kill the combatants before the tournament. You'll see. Up to save Cole and his family, and while driving them to safety, tells Cole what's going on. That scary blue ninja is hunting both of them down since they both have those dragon markings on their bodies. It's not a birthmark, Cole. It means you've been chosen. Before he can explain too much, Sub Zero blocks their path, so Jax tells Cole to go find a woman named Sonya Blade while he tries to take care of the Iceman. The fight between Jax and Sub Zero is preceded by some Easter egg graffiti, the controller input to perform Sub Zero's freeze attack. Subby shows up for a fight that gives us a look at Jax's muscles in action, but despite their impressive girth, he gets his ass kicked by Sub-Zero. I mean, the guy does have ice powers. It's nothing to be yeah, ashamed of, Jax. Subby and the armor, don't forget armor. Force Jax into submission, then freezes him from hands to shoulders. With a painful shattering, yeah. Jax oh. loses his Second Amendment rights. That's really gonna suck when you can't catch yourself See during you. the fall. Damn, that looks oh. like Subby, you mean. As we've seen, yeah. Bihan has been a bad guy for centuries, but nowadays he's working for the desolate, hostile outworld. He's hunting mm -hmm. down people with dragon markings on behalf of a sorcerer named Shang Tsung, played here by Chin Han, who has the unfortunate job of stepping into the massive shoes left by Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa. Shang Tsung Very wants cute. to kill all of Earthrealm's potential champions before the tournament can even begin. Don't worry, See? Shangy, you've got time. Cole drops off Emily and Allison somewhere safe and heads to Gary, Indiana to meet Sonya Blade. He gets to her shitty trailer and shows her a shitty marking, earning her trust and a dollop of backstory. Sonya and Jack serve together in the U.S. Special Forces, but lately they've been researching those dragon markings. On a mission years ago, they found a target with a marking who had superhuman abilities. When Jax killed the target, the marking transferred to his body. As best they could uh -oh. tell, the marking has to do with some kind of legendary inter-realm fighting tournament. It's an invitation to fight for something known as Mortal Kombat. Mortal okay. Kombat! 
Aside from, and yeah, this scene is one big old exposition dump, but at least it includes yeah, you know. Easter eggs for Mortal Kombat fans. Peep that picture of Nightwolf, one of my favorite characters. Or that bust of Kotal Khan, the future hey, former leader of Outworld. There may be more Easter eggs hidden mm -hmm. here too. Sonya's wall of intel became yeah. a full-time job for the art department. We knew that if the camera went across it, it would be freeze-framed and red. So everything had to be accurate and everything had to be right. But enough of those cameos. Let's get another character in the mix. The Australian Hi, Kano. Kano. Kano what? Kano, none of your fucking business. No last name. <laughs> Kano is a ruthless mercenary <laughs> who works for the Black, Black Dragon. Dragon Clan. Sonya's holding him captive because he has a dragon marking. Just like Jax, Kano's marking appeared after he killed someone else who had it. He were never chosen. Of course, neither was Sonya. She doesn't even have a marking. All of a sudden, <laughs> they start getting Whoa. an invisible beatdown thanks to a camouflaged foe. It steps on Kano's Yeah, that's supposed to be a reptile, by the way. Slash, then slinks around in the rafters, dripping acid from its mouth. This is Sizop, aka Reptile. In MK mainstay who's had invisibility since he was a hidden character in the first game. I love how they mm -hmm. use a flare in this fight to keep track of him. Reptile's character evolved from a green pellet swap ninja to being a member of the reptilian species known as Saurians. Since director Simon mm -hmm. McQuoad wanted to draw from all of Mortal Kombat's lore, he made his movie's version both quadrupedal and bipedal. The three-on-one mm -hmm. handicap match Double. eventually mm -hmm. ends when Kano punches in the reptile's chest and, screaming, removes his heart. Kano wins. You fucking beauty. Josh Lawson is Damn. so damn entertaining as Kano, and many of his lines were improvised. Not sure which ones, though. Sonya wants to go to Raiden's <laughs> Temple, saying. where champions train for Mortal Kombat, and Kano knows where it is, since he used to run weapons there. He takes them there on a cargo plane that they have to parachute out of, yeah. then they begin the long trek with Kano as their guide. He says he knows where they're going, but that dude lives in a house of lies. Since he's such a dick, it's a good thing they get additional help in the form of this ah, Luke King. Here. It's Lou frickin' King, and he's got frickin' Yeah, fire. Does that mean I'm gonna get superpowers at any point? Liu Kang's a Shaolin we'll monk see. from the Order of Light, another Earth Realm champion in the employment of Lord Raiden. He's played by Ludi Lin, previously a Power Ranger, yeah, and nice. another fighting game character in an episode of Black Mirror. Liu leads them across the desert nice. expanse until they arrive at Raiden's temple. Both of the previous Mortal Kombat films had awesome on-location shoots, and I'm glad this installment continues that tradition, now with more sweeping cinematography. Ooh. Location supervisor Jacob McIntyre scouted epic landscapes throughout Australia. Sometimes they needed to modify things, like with Hanzo's lush there. Japan set Gotta compound. keep it. There, they added fake moss and greenery to Mount Crawford's pine forest an hour away from Adelaide. For Raiden's Here's temple, hoping they though, got had an empty opal mine called Cooper Petey, they didn't have to do anything. Though it had never nice. been filmed before, it was already screen ready. Lose hand lantern and- Man, what are the odds? But hey, goes to show you sometimes, with a little luck, a little preparation, you can make a great film. Or in this case, well, a good film. You know, I gotta say, they must have gotten lucky with the locations, huh? I mean, hey, the mo mine was just film ready. Way to go. <laughs> anyway, looks like our uh, heroes, well, two heroes and one eventual villain and Kano. Come on, you know what's up. Anywho, moving on. And a secret door gains the entrance inside the temple, where murals depict previous mm -hmm. tournaments and give us more Easter eggs. One of them shows the realm named Adenia, and another Shao Kahn, the hammer wielding emperor of Outworld. And yeah, Cole, that one's got your grandpappy in it. Explains all those weird dreams you've been having lately. Besides the murals, mm -hmm. which look really cool in real life, Raiden's temple includes other Easter eggs. Hey, look, such Katana's as fans. Fans of Princess Katana and Shinnok's amulet, an important item way, in the game's storyline. Liu Kang introduces no, I think mostly to more like later. Daddy Raiden. Who says they're pretty shithouse champions, especially you, Kano? Raiden's played by Tadanobu Asano in a performance that I know disappointed a lot of people. One more victory, and Outward will gain control over Earth forever. I think it's fine, but I was expecting more given Asano's electric performance in Ichi the Killer. I wonder if he just took this role because he's a fan of hats. It may not bristle me as much as Christopher Lambert's Weasley depiction. <laughs> but I was yeah. hoping for more of the forcefulness we get from the video game version. Our time has run out. I do what I must to save Earthrealm. Raiden's worried about this It'd be kind of cool if he actually had the more comic guy doing it. Why not? not only does the sorcerer have Sub-Zero on his side, he's got this shorty with a monster mouth named That's Lee. Lee. Our world may be a bit barren, but it's still dazzling <laughs> thanks to them shooting at Lee Creek Coal Mine. Director McCoy hauled <laughs> his cast and crew there six hours away from Adelaide, correctly thinking that the on-location 
fish and shoot would add to the performances and epicness. Sub-Zero nice. ice forces his way inside Raiden's temple. The baddies are here to wreck the place and give Shang Tsung some spiritual <laughs> nom-noms. There's so long. Some mine. Dude eats souls. Raiden mm -hmm. shows up and tells Shang Tsung to fuck off, please and thank you. They'll fight at the tournament and not before it, even if it doesn't happen in this movie. He puts up a lightning shield with his Power Ranger staff, and that's enough mm -hmm. to push the plot back a little while longer. The newbies start training with <laughs> Liu Kang and his cousin, professional hat thrower Kung Lao. Descendant of the great Kung Lao. Kung Lao's ancestor was shown in one of those yeah, murals, was... defeating Shang Tsung, which prevented an earlier Earth Realm takeover attack. Nice. Liu and Kung Lao have unlocked their arcanas, this movie's invention that explains why everyone has superpowers. They did so by training, aka leveling up, but it's not just about the grind. You also need a dragon marking equipped. So, sorry, Sonya, no superpower no, nice. for you. <laughs> Fucking whoops. The marked boys get to fighting, which, as always in this movie, is a treat to watch. It's impressive how actor Max Huang matches the spinny fluid style of video game Kung Lao. He says it was the Chinese martial arts style Wing Chun. Huang was a real-life fan of the game, yeah. as were many other cast and crew members. Jax's actor, Makad Brooks, said that as a kid, he was Scorpion for Halloween. This is still uh -huh. a big deal to me. I love that the actors cared about the franchise as much as writer Russo and director McCoy. That's cute. This doesn't feel like it was just another job for them. They seem to know the importance of portraying these characters properly for fans of the franchise. Mm -hmm. Melina's actor, Sissy Stringer, got hey, a 2,000 word fan essay about her character backstory so she could go into the role fully prepared. The training sequence includes a reference to a common play style in the original oh, game, yeah, spamming the leg whoop. sweep. That the only move you know, mate. Ah, oh, fuck. Nope. <laughs> Another game. <laughs> oh, crap. Ah. tells Cole Young his backstory. He mentions Bo Rai Cho, the man who trained mm -hmm. him in Kung Lao, and who in the games early on was a guy who burped and farted a lot. It was dumb. Since she can't yeah. train with the marked boys, Sonya instead hangs out with Jack, who's being treated in the temple after Liu Kang found him alive, but, you know, armless. Now he's rocking these mechanical limbs, which aren't exactly a one-to-one -one replacement for his previously bulging biceps. Oh, those are great, mate. They make those in men's sizes? Kano goes on a suppertime tirade of personal insults and mild racism, and that anger unlocks his arcana, which blasts oh. forth from his eye. Ah, laser beam! Better than fireballs, you pussy! No matter how much they beat up Cole, though, the kid just can't find his power. Must be extra disappointing after he finds out he's the descendant of Hanzo Hasashi, a legendary warrior murdered by Sub-Zero. Since Cole won't shut up about how much he misses his family, Raiden opens a lightning portal and sends the guy home. Cheaper than ride shares, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah pretty much came up. Hug that frugal husband. Here, let's meet some more Mortal Kombat characters. Freaking Cabal, Cabal, one of my faves, and two characters I was unfamiliar with, Reiko and Natara who Shang Tsung okay. keeps saying is hot. She is beautiful. In every single way. There's also the still <laughs> unseen Shokan warrior Prince Goro, who was earlier mm -hmm. used in one of those murals. Shang yeah, Tsung says they're all about to beat up some Earth Realmers, and to get to them, they'll lean on Cabal's networking skills. You see a guy down there? Complete fucking asshole. Answers to Kano. Cabal knows Kano through mm -hmm. the Black Dragon Syndicate, and in fact, Kano's the reason Cabal's all Darth Vaderized. Through a profanity ridden back and forth, Cabal convinces Kano to join the bad guys. Just name your price, then double it, then double it again. What are you waiting for, asshole? Kano agrees and destroys Raiden's shield thingy with his laser eye, allowing Shang Tsung to hotbox the place with evil smoke that transports him Expect and his Expect anything less from these guys? promptly ensues. Liu Kang goes up against Cabal's superhuman speed and hook weapons. Reiko takes his boom hammer to Jackson his rough draft arms, and the ladies square up, with Sonya having to defend herself against Melina's pair of sides. Melina gets the best of Sonya, and even gets a little bit kinky with Oof. her. But since Sonya's blood doesn't have that dragon marking spice to it, Melina says she's not worthy. Your death has no worth. Purple teleport away! Kano picks up the slack and puts Sonya down by laser beaming a giant hand onto her body, which is probably its own category on Pornhub. As Kamal <laughs> gets the best of Liu Kang, Shang Tsung tells his hottie hot vampire girlfriend to fight Kung Lao. Now destroy him, my beauty. That uh, doesn't go great for Natara. Kung Lao nope. centers himself and revs up his chakram half. Heads up! Drives Natara into it so she gets freaking buzzsawed, yeah! Yep, for yes! Victory. Fuck yeah, it was, dude. That was mm -hmm. sick. During all this fighting, Cole gets a home visit from Prince Goro, who, for whatever mm -hmm. reason, comes out of his shed. This Goro looks pretty good for a giant CG beast, although I missed the clunky animatronic created by Tom Woodruff at ABI. It wasn't great, but I can't help thinking how good a modern day practical Goro could look. Just think of Neil Scanlon's work oh, in yeah, Jurassic true. World Fallen Kingdom and imagine a Goro of that caliber. Instead, we get a digital. Would be kind of cool, though, but I mean, hey. <laughs> 
And knowing uh, Shang Tsung, he'll probably bring Goro back. Maybe, I don't know. Would be kind of cool to see it, but... Hmm. I guess they can... I just... Ugh, sorry. I guess they didn't have the budget for, you know, practical puppets. I don't know. At least that's what I'm thinking, but we'll see. Version, ...which was done with two dudes in blue screen suits, the back one on stilts, so they could choreograph a fight properly using the character's four arms. Props to VFX supervisor Chris Godfrey for all the solid CG. I did not realize that Jax's entire chest had blue screen effects going on. It looks great. Much better than his annihilation bullshit. Allison gets involved to help her man, turning Goro's attention to her and Emily. And you do not want that guy's attention. With his family in danger, Cole finally finds his arcana. It's a suit of armor that comes out of a bracelet Emily had made for him earlier. And because uh -huh. of that, it looks like golden thread. It also looks bad, in my opinion. Kind of cheap, yeah, perhaps oof. a product of this movie's budget. 55 million See? bucks isn't exactly an indie movie, but it's mm -hmm. not a huge blockbuster budget either. I think every dollar yeah, wound up on the screen, but they might not have had enough to make all the costumes great. Regardless, costume oof. designer Cappy nice. Ireland put a lot of thought into all of the outfits. Shang Tsung is rocking ancient Chinese <laughs> armor, for instance, with the soul he's stolen and printed on it. I like that they changed Raiden's hat from straw to metal, and apparently on Cabal's costume, he's got a police badge from his buddy Stryker, another game character who hasn't yet made it to the big screen. Cole's armor is part of his arcana, which is also kind of lame. I guess it's a kinetic thing where he can absorb blows and turn them into strength or something. He uses this yeah, newfound advantage to go on the offense against Prince Goro, and he fares much better in the second round of their bout, especially with that other Ooh! cat. He even materializes there you go. a pair of golden Tanfa, and with those, he really lays into his four-armed foe. Well, yeah. four-armed and three-handed. Now three-handed. With this Tanfa, Cole delivers some gnarly slashes and stabs that finally puts the <laughs> Prince of Shokan down. Right through the eye. It sucks that we only got a few minutes of Goro, but at least he went out with some gore, yo. At Raiden's mm -hmm. temple, Jax finds Sonya being crushed to death. The care he has for his comrade unlocks his arcana, a pair of metal arms that look a lot nice. more like his video game ones. It does beg the question, though. What would his arcana have been if he had never lost his arms? Man, the arcana thing is dumb. Raiden begins mm -hmm. a tactical retreat, but Kung Lao gets caught by Shang Tsung. Uh oh. <laughs> Kung Lao is killed by Shang Tsung when the sorcerer Oof. sucks out his soul. In some circles, they call that a soul slurp. You know, like a turkey mm -hmm. slurpee. Raiden teleports his champions to an inter-realm location called the Void. Even Cole, who takes a lightning portal from his front yard. Love you fam, but bye. Gotta go get my inheritance. A garden spade from the white-eyed wizard man. Cole says that they can beat the bad guys as long as they fight them on their turn. That means pairing everyone off at different locations. But how can they Fair do enough. that? Lord Raiden, can you send anyone anywhere? Oh, okay. That was easy. That was the easy. fights take place simultaneously, <laughs> but it's easier to go through them one by one. So, Shall the we? first bout takes place in the pit, an infamous <laughs> Mortal Kombat stage that's been in many of the games. There, mm -hmm. Jax fights Reiko and his hammer. The new and improved arms prove to make it a yeah. much more even match. <laughs> Jax ends things pretty quickly when he jumps and claps Reiko's skull into smithereens. Oh! Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Yeah, Damn. these motherfuckers work. The next fight mm -hmm. is probably my favorite. Surprised he didn't so just kick him off the edge, too. Quarter. Like, see him! fights Sonya in her tiny trailer home, which he's outfitted with secret hatches and crawl spaces aplenty. I really like how confined all their attacks are here. Plus, mm -hmm. they beat each other up using simple household items. You can make a BuzzFeed list out of that. The fight Pretty spills much. outside the bathroom window, Oof. where Sonya ends things by stabbing Kano in the eye with a garden gnome. With that yep. gnome, the dragon marking See passes ya. from his body to hers. The arcana is still a dumb thing, but I'm happy for you, Sonya. Next is Luke Kang Sonya. facing off against Cabal, in a rematch like this were a Raw the night after a pay-per-view. Lou's mm -hmm. more prepared for Ball speed this time and even hits him with a bicycle kick, <laughs> one of the most satisfying moves to land in the game. Partly mm -hmm. because of the ridiculous sound effect. <laughs> The kick traps Cabal in a pit of some sort, and now Liu Kang is ready to murk him. He summons a giant fire dragon that swoops in and burn boy, him, getting things all sorts of toasty. Toasty! Cabal falls to his knees, a crispy burnt boy. I love how much this death matches the game fatality, too. Finally, See, we have a brutality. fighting Melina, who keeps up the purple teleportation. Teleportation? She ends up getting mm. so mad that she screams the corners of her Ugh. mouth open, showing us the extent of her sharp teeth and making her look more like her video game there you self. Go. That's a problem for Cole, but thankfully, for him, Sonya shows up with her new arcana. It's her pink energy bracelets that she launches straight through Melina's torso. And Which, dead. Why didn't the ring sever her spinal cord? You know what? Fuck it. It's yeah, good. that's last more Sub-Zero scene. filmed at the Black Hill Granite Quarry, two hours Ooh. outside of Adelaide. Keeping with McCode's desire to have as many I don't know they're pretty close together. Possible, the actors fought in front of real fire 
water being piped in through copper fixtures. Cabal's Thanks. death was a huge fire stunt performed by his physical actor, stuntman Daniel Nelson. Cabal's Thanks, voice, Daniel. on the other hand, was provided by Damon Harriman, the guy who played Charles Manson in both Mindhunter and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. With the yeah, other really? evil henchmen defeated, all that's left is Sub-Zero, who's such a horror villain, he's showing up in jump scares at Cole's family safe uh -oh. house. He appears to the Earthrealm champions and indicates that he's been up to some daughter napping. That lures Cole to follow him solo straight you into the Batman. It's actually Cole's gym they wind up at, where his story began. But now it's covered in ice, courtesy of production designer Naaman Marshall. He built a dip tank to cover all the set pieces in their fake ice material, then painted more on for good measure. It was so effective, the actors said they felt cold on set. With the fate of his was a cold? family at stake, Cole begins his fight against B. Han, who immediately neutralizes his tonfa and kicks his ass seven ways to Sunday. <laughs> the descendant of Hanzo Hasashi fights back and bleeds all over the garden spear, and that triggers a resurrection. Han who returns from the nether realm as Scorpion. Get over here! Thus begins what's yeah. probably the most kick-ass fight of this movie, the one-on-one -on -one battle between yep. fan favorites... Sub-Zero versus Scorpion. Scorpion! This is fight. such a better <laughs> use of these characters than the 1995 film, where they were both blameless mm -hmm. henchmen of Shang Tsung. These two have always had an intricate, bombastic relationship, and I love seeing it come to the big screen. Immortal Scorpion. You are. Their fight mm -hmm. continues with frozen blood daggers and harpoons on chains as Cole tries desperately to thaw out his family. Oh shit, and Sub Zero uses Ice Clone? That's another classic move. Fuck yeah, I love this movie. And boy, does Joe Taslam have a flair for the dramatic. Taslam, who plays <laughs> Sub Zero, was previously in the raid. Co actor Mikad Brooks watched it before shooting their fight scene, which he said might have been a mistake. I gotta fight that dude? Taslam moved so <laughs> fast, he had to Oops. slow things down for the camera, a result of his 15 years on the Indonesian. And judo team. This was a treat for stunt coordinator really? Kyle Gardner and fight choreographer Chan Griffin. You need to do the things that you always wanted to do in a movie and everyone tells you you can't do it. Griffin was excited to work with performers who could handle anything he threw at them, even when they were just shy of 60, like Scorpion's actor Hiroyuki Sanada. Some, yes. like Sonya's actor Jessica McNamee, tried to do a lot of the fighting and stunts themselves. Others, like Josh Lawson, eh, not so much. My stunt double looks so much like like me that I'm the first to go <laughs> step in buddy you look good you look good you look better than me so go for it but the holy grail was this final fight though Taslam and Lewis Tan were so experienced they didn't use doubles which Taslam said makes for better chemistry on screen when you fight someone and then they double the other guy it feels yeah, like kind of keeps the flow going kind of like comes that. down to a two-on-one that sees the chinese warriors mm -hmm. start to lose send him versus he rips assassin. off his blue armor giving himself the all-black appearance of his yeah, future noob persona noob cybot stay tuned for that evil motherfucker in any sequel mm -hmm. bihan also drops the sub-zero mask as he makes his final stand for the lin kuei but he's no match for two Shit. generations of hanzos huh? to get him to his knees if you're gonna dress like a noob huh? you're about to get treated like one dude yeah. scorpion uses his newfound hellfire powers to light some Sub-Zero ablaze with a giant blast from his mouth flamethrower. Just like that, Subby's turned into an ashen corpse. Now Scorpion mm -hmm. has been freed, just like Cole's family, and he tells his descendant to please try to keep the bloodline going. Okay, back to hell. Raiden and the others show up. <laughs> See which, you know, maybe they could have done 15 minutes ago. Shang Tsung is still lurking around, but I told you, we ain't getting the tourney in this film. And don't mm. worry about all your faves that got killed. Death is only another portal. With that, there's hope True. that we'll get more Kano and Goro in future films. Raiden sends Shang Tsung Accurate. back to Outworld with a lightning blast and tells his champions that they need to prepare for that tournament. It'll happen, he swears. The movie ends with Cole yeah, heading to Hollywood to make contact with their top recruit, an action star by the name of Johnny, Johnny Cage, Cage, hopefully played by The Miz. How many kills did <laughs> I get out with a K? Let's find, Let's out. find out. Hey Lord Raiden, that'll help get into the numbers. Oh, perfect. That guy can send anyone anywhere. Yeah. I hope he sent him in the right place. I counted Thanks. 31 kills in Mortal Kombat 2021. Only three of them were of women, while the 28 male victims included a lot of unnamed ninjas. Mm -hmm. Some frozen chunks in that pie chart, though, so I don't think it's fit for consumption. Mostly frozen, yeah. With a runtime of 110 minutes, that left us with a kill on average about every three and a half Damn minutes. Miss. Golden nice. Chainsaw for coolest kill is tough, because there were a lot of awesome ones. Muscles? I'll give it to Natara. I think yeah. it's the kill most people will remember Woo! walking away from this thing. Dull Machete for lamest mm. kill is gonna have to go to any of the nameless ninjas seen dead, having been killed off screen. 
Everything Sounds else is right. dope. And that's it. Right, Mortal Kombat came out in 2021 and was the first movie I saw in theaters since Invisible Man in February 2020. That could Amen. also play into why I like it so much. Though I'm hoping for a sequel, nothing's been confirmed yet. So I'll keep crossing my fingers. And in the meantime, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. Well, then, Jack. I mean, I think it did well enough for a sequel, but I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping they're okay with the sequel, but let's just hope, uh... Actually, I'm not sure what they would do for a sequel. Maybe that's what's stopping them. I mean, you could get some new ones, you know, more of the Lin Kuei, maybe Bihan's, you know, brother, who would turn good, Kung Lao. You, you get me, right? <laughs> be kind of fun. Anyway, so there you go. The Mortal Kombat Kill Count. Let me know what you guys think, and until next time, see ya!